Welcome to the Home Fellowship Podcast. We are a place where the students of Belfast can gather together and encounter Jesus and then go live a life like him. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. Feel free to check us out on Facebook and Instagram for our upcoming events. Guys, welcome to the first of our podcast of 2020. Uh, today we're joined by Jamie Maitland. Jamie, thank you for your time today. No problem, thanks for having me. Anytime. You're looking um, good, mate. <laughs> you too, mate. Is that a fresh haircut? <laughs> it's indeed Cliffs uh, near Conswater, guys. That's a plug. Not That's, sponsored. Uh, not sponsored. Yep. 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 yep, yep, it's a big word there. But yeah, Jamie, thanks for your time. Jimmy um, uh, heads up an organisation called Made For More, um, who are in over 50 schools and do so much with youth groups and do so much um, stuff. I'll let him chat a wee bit more about it. But before before we do that, Jimmy, I'm going to ask you a question. We ask everybody this. When you were a student... Did you have a signature meal or a signature dish that you'd whip up? Um, Flip, we're going back a long time. Um, I lived at home, so probably not at home, right? But when I think of being a student, what did I eat? Ulster University, Jordanstown, Mm -hmm. big shout out. Um, There was a sausage roll you could get on the the way in or out of the university. And it was probably about 90% meat, 10% pastry. Good. And that I would say I got one every day on the way in yeah, yeah. and one every day on the way out <laughs> and lived on a diet of sausage rolls. It. So it was absolutely brilliant. 90p as well, bargain. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was about the size of your arm. That's cheap. Uh, yeah, so no good times. <laughs> so student student diet of sausage rolls probably yeah. sums me up nicely. Nice one, nice one. So you're saying there about Jordanstown, did you did you enjoy being a student? What was your what did you study, sorry, at Jordanstown? <laughs> Yeah, so I studied sports studies, uh-huh. um, which is harder than it sounds, yeah. to be honest. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I did that, and I, could, I enjoyed it to a point. I didn't really buy into the student life as probably I should have, mm-hmm. to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of, I rarely went to class, and what I did, I had my hood up, mm-hmm. and I sloughed in at the back, and then just creeped out, and I went home and slept most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, it didn't move away or anything. So didn't really yeah. get that experience. Yeah. Um, but when I look back though, like I wasn't a Christian for the first year, so I probably spent most of my time at Kelly's mm-hmm. with my mates who went up, uh, were up in Coleraine. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not a plug for Kelly's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so would have went up there a lot in first year and spent most of my time playing rugby mm-hmm. um, and just sort of focusing on that. And then yeah, nearly sort of halfway through my first year uni. Um, became a Christian mm-hmm. and that just changed everything about what I was doing all of a sudden I, I made new friends in church and yeah. um, I was involved in sort of volunteering for you know youth stuff in the church mm-hmm. um, and that became my focus so it was amazing then to see even my friendship groups change within mm-hmm. uni mm-hmm. and all of a sudden I found myself surrounded by really good Christian people yeah that um, just love Jesus and and that was so good for me you know awesome. um, fitting in there um, and yeah, so sort of look back at uni and think probably wasted opportunities to sort of maybe make really good close friends. Yeah. But um, it was definitely I found it a good place to be a Christian. Mm-hmm. I think I I struggled. I would have struggled to be a Christian in school because of just my personality. I always wanted to fit in and be mm-hmm. popular. Mm-hmm. Um, uni, I found it a lot easier. People were more accepting of different mm-hmm. beliefs. Um, and there wasn't a pressure, you know, yeah. to conform. It was, mm-hmm. it was a lot more chilled out. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that that was uni basically. Hood yeah. up, sleep, eat sausage rolls, yeah, yeah. <laughs> find Jesus. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Class. You're saying there about you know your friendship group before you at a party and stuff. Were, were your friends? Did they respect you that decision? Did you get a bit of slagging? How was that when you did become a Christian? Yeah, it was it was a lot better than I thought. To be honest, mm-hmm. I remember sitting down and and having a pint with one of the boys and just saying to them, "Listen." Um, I became a Christian mm-hmm. and he was like right and then that was it it was a bit <laughs> awkward I didn't yeah. really know to go from there but yeah. uh, but naturally we did drift apart um, mm-hmm. because uh, they just continued the party lifestyle throughout university mm-hmm. um, and I, I just didn't have an interest in it anymore and, you, yeah. and then you soon find that you didn't see them as much because of that you know mm-hmm. um, and, and that was okay you mm-hmm. know there was never a falling out there was never like an issue we just drifted apart yeah um and i just made you know some some good friends in church and actually a friend of mine from school who you know i would have went up to and went to kelly's with he became a christian mm-hmm. almost at the same time as me so wow. and we're, we're still best mates today nice um and then i met my now wife mm-hmm. um the lovely mrs meeklum mm-hmm. um and she was just a massive help as well because we were good friends and then 
you know, started going out and just went on that journey of faith together. And that definitely kept me on the on the straight and narrow faith wise because cool. it was someone I could ask proper questions to. Yeah. You know, and actually, you know, would just would just tell me off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and keep me on track. You know. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So okay, it was it was interesting the transition, but I think in uni you naturally do that anyway, don't you? Mm -hmm. You kind of move away from your school friends. Yeah. You find new friends, and and for me that was the perfect timing, mm -hmm. and, and God's timing is always perfect because I surrounded myself with good Christians. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was good. Nice. And then after Jordanstown, what was your what was your journey after Jordanstown finishing sports science? What was what was next for you after that? Um, so the, the dream was to, the dream initially was to join the RAF, right? So I had it all mapped out, you know, this is pre-Jesus. So I was basically going to join the RAF, become an officer, join the rugby team, and then travel the world and play rugby. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought anyway. Um, but instantly, once I became a Christian, I realized, no, God, God has a plan for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt that he wanted me to become a teacher cool. um, and use my faith and use sport to reach young people mm -hmm. and really challenge them and, and, and encourage them. So, so I sort of changed what I was studying within the course and, and focused more on teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, that was kind of my path to the end of, of my degree. And then I applied to do a PGC mm -hmm. um, to be a teacher um, and didn't get on um, mm -hmm. first year. Um, so it was a case of then, right, well, what do you do? You know, you've, you've got a year to kind of sort of bump up the CV a wee bit, get yeah. some experience. Um, and just learn. So started coaching rugby for Ulster Rugby, mm -hmm. um, which is a good wee job to be fair, mm -hmm. going around primary schools and secondary schools teaching. If it rains, mm -hmm. primary schools don't go outside. Okay. So you stay in bed <laughs> and you still get paid. Nice. Absolute winner. <laughs> <laughs> and it rains a lot. Love it. Um, also, they don't like going out in the cold as well. So uh, you're in the winter months, you were laughing like. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I did that up until March. Mm -hmm. So September to March. And then I went to South Africa mm -hmm. and coached rugby and worked in a gym in a school for two months. Um, and that was amazing. It was really good. It was it was just a great experience. Like South Africa is an amazing country. Mm -hmm. um, sort of fell in love with it. The, the whole ethos around sport was amazing. But it was also good for me as a Christian, going out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Like no one else there were Christians yeah. that I was working with. Um, you know, constantly, you know, trying to get me to go out and, mm -hmm. and go drinking and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I'd probably been really taken out of my comfort zone. Um, and just had to find my own feet mm -hmm. for two months. And, and I really grew in my faith, um, and it was really challenging, and, and I really enjoyed myself. So so did that, and then came back, got on the PGC, thanks to that experience. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, went to uni again for another year, did a couple of placements. Um, and my second placement was in Grosvenor Grammar School mm -hmm. um, over in East Belfast. And, and then God's timing again is perfect. So, you know, because I was there in placement, a job came up. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of in a good position to get that, and I cool. did. I nice. did that year, so yeah, it was good. Happy days, cool. What was it like being a teacher and being a Christian in Grosvenor? Was it good? Were you involved with the CU or anything? Or yeah, it it was amazing. Like you know, looking back now, that was my first ever teaching job, and mm -hmm. um, and again, God just puts you where He needs you to be, and and for me, I found myself in a big P department with three other three other guys, and all of them were Christians. Epic. And very quickly, yeah, we we sort of just became real close, um, yeah. and we would just spend a lot of time together. We would pray together. We created just a real good culture of like, you know, talking about Jesus um, and trying to you know share our faith. And and within Grosvenor, I just found it was really natural to to speak to the kids about everything right. and just to share my faith and. Mm -hmm. I kind of look back on it fondly and probably with rose tinted glasses, but mm. almost that I wasn't a teacher. I was almost like a youth worker, yeah, you yeah. know, in school, having a laugh, chatting to kids about their life mm. and sharing my faith. And, and it was brilliant. Um, I loved it. But again, like it only lasted two years. Um, yeah. I got made redundant. The budget cuts came in mm -hmm. and basically last in, first out. Right. So it was a case of, of me being moved out the door and mm -hmm. I flipped. That was painful. Yeah. Because I was there for life, you know, in yeah, my head. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking God has put me in the best place. Mm -hmm. Like it's filled with Christians. Mm. You know, imagine all the good stuff I can do here. Yeah. And then to be told, you know, all of a sudden that's gone yeah. through no fault of your own. Aye. Just you're away. Mm -hmm. it, it, it crushed me, to be honest. Like I was really low for a long time. And yeah. Uh, and wrestled with it for years. It made me quite, you know, cynical just about like the whole education system mm -hmm. and 
and is it worth you know working really hard if mm -hmm. it's just going to be taken away from you mm -hmm. and all this type of stuff and yeah and, and it was a real journey i had to go on mm. um but again having those those christian men there at that time yeah you know we prayed about it you know a couple of them spoke words over me about my future and and how God might choose to use it for something else. Mm -hmm. Even Ryan, who works with Made For More now, like he did his placement that year wow. um, from uni, yeah, and, and Ryan wasn't a Christian. Ryan, Ryan was far from God, and yeah. he found himself dumped in this department for you know six months, surrounded by this sort of, these crazy Christians mm -hmm. who you know, we're talking about Jesus and then there's me freaking out about losing my job and yeah. and their go to is let's pray for Jimmy, let's mm. you know, what's God's plan on it all? Yeah. And you know, and Ryan himself just says he just was like, What is this? Mm. I need this. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing to see the full circle, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's like what, seven years later, mm. Ryan now loves Jesus and works with me and made for more. Brilliant. You know, mm. it's amazing how God's <laughs> kinda used that. That's so cool. then I found myself out of Grosvenor and um and up in Shimna, mm -hmm. Shimna Integrated College in Newcastle. Cool. And then you worked there for a wee bit, and then that's when made for more made for more amazing idea. A wee bit I work with them, um, as, as well as my sister and a couple of interns, and it's been such a blessing for me even being up here in this office. Bit of table um, tennis, table tennis, love it. No one can beat me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, I think you are maybe. currently on top, like to be fair to you. But uh, made for more amazing. Tell us a wee bit about that. How did how did God give you that vision, or what what happened when Shimna and Made for more, how'd that come about? Yeah, I suppose it goes back to being made redundant. Mm -hmm. I sat down with a guy, he's a good friend of mine, and and he just he just sort of spoke a word over me and said like he had a sense that that I was losing my job potentially because God God was gonna take me out of teaching. Okay. And it was a case of if 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 God doesn't take me out of Grosvenor, I'm never going to leave teaching, mm -hmm. you know, and I get that because I loved it so much when I look back, yeah. you know, so I understand that, you know, maybe God needed to remove me from that situation to teach me new things and prepare me. So I end up in Shimna um, and I was there for six years and Flip couldn't have been any more different from Grosvenor right. in, in every way possible. Well, mm -hmm. And I don't mean that all in a negative sense, you mm -hmm. know, I, I had a good time there mm -hmm. and although it took me a long time to adapt, and actually be myself because mm -hmm. I was I was down for a couple of years and yeah I kind of describe it like the spark was out of me mm -hmm. you know and, mm -hmm. I, and I became shy and reserved and mm -hmm. and I just I changed a wee bit you know and I don't think it was for the better and it was because I was taken out of this Christian environment and dumped in an environment that was no longer Christian yeah and that I didn't choose you know I was transferred there type mm -hmm. of thing and um, also there was no other guys in my department Right. So it went from this team mm. ethos to you're on your own, you do everything, you spend quite a lot of your day on your own in your office. Yeah. So it was difficult, but again, God uses it, and he just started to shape me, and, and after a period of time, I was kind of thinking, okay, God, like, what, do you, what do you want from me here? Mm -hmm. you know, how, how can you use me? And I just started to work hard, just trying to really build, build something you awesome. know, when I was there. And, and then over a period of time, I felt God asking me to to step out in faith mm. and, and leave teaching mm -hmm. and go into to something else something maybe you know church work or, or some sort of ministry and i remember the time thinking okay god i'm willing to do that it was a change of posture mm -hmm. there was definitely just in this sort of spiritual sense of me saying god i'm a hundred percent in mm. like wherever you want me to go i will leave teaching uh, and I will do that, and yeah. and I kind of feel that my posture towards it completely changed, and and that was brilliant in one sense, and I was ready. You yeah. know what I mean? Now I'm ready to go, right? So what's happening? Where's the jobs at? Let's go. Yeah. And then God just said, "Wait." Okay. I want you to wait, mm. and it was a case of God was telling me, "Be prepared for what's coming," whereas I was thinking, "No, let's do it now." Yeah. You know what I mean? And. Um, but then during the waiting, like a waiting season is never a wasted season. God mm. equips you and he molds you. So for me then, as I'm waiting, I feel myself going, right, who knows how long you're going to be here. Mm. Could be weeks, could be months. Turned out to be two years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, what can I do? So we started a prayer group with a load of teachers. Mm -hmm. There's like five of us were Christians. So we started praying for the kids. And that way you learn more about maybe what's going on in some, with some of them because teachers are sharing stories. Yeah. You're praying for them. All of a sudden you care about them more. Mm -hmm. We started up a wee SU, me and one of the other teachers, and 
where like five kids would come mm. sometimes one kid would come yeah but again you would just love them and try and you know just teach them truth yeah um, and again that that changes you mm -hmm. and then i just thought well became head of department and learning for life and work started to bring christian organizations in to try and reach more people um and then i got involved in pastoral care and mentoring mm -hmm. um, just in the sense i was mentoring some some young boys trying to help them you know manage their timetable stay out of trouble mm -hmm. reward them but you start just learning more about them mm -hmm. you start learning like flip these kids lives or they are tough yeah. you know and a lot of the kids in our school would have come from from maybe broken homes a lot of them had mental health issues a lot you hear lots of the kids chatting about you know they're drinking at the weekends the parties are going to the drugs that they're taking mm -hmm. and it just started to really impact me the culture that was there it's it's everywhere yeah it wasn't just this school mm. but it opened my eyes to just how deep it was mm. and and i remember just thinking like god what's the answer what's the answer for these young people mm -hmm. and and one day like i just remember this word identity mm. it just it just came so loud and, and, and so obvious to me that they have a lack of identity mm -hmm. the young people of northern ireland have a lack of identity you know who made them mm. why are they here mm -hmm. what's the purpose of their life how do they find hope where do they find joy yeah you know what, what are they meant to do with their lives mm -hmm. you know and and they're all struggling with it like even the students you know be people watching this yeah that struggle with that yeah absolutely because the world is telling us one thing but i think something deep down inside of us mm. is telling us no that's not what you're made for mm -hmm. so now i'm in this place where i've got this posture of right god where do you want me to go yeah i've got this word identity and i'm kind of just sitting there <laughs> what the <laughs> flip do you do with it yeah and and then yeah just praying into it getting frustrated at times mm -hmm. you know properly getting annoyed at god yeah um pushing doors thinking ah there's a christian job we'll go for that mm -hmm. doors close and mm -hmm. you're thinking what's going on here mm -hmm. and then one day i was i was in the gym leg day i think Pro probably like <laughs> do you train legs <laughs> every day is leg day no um uh, I, was, I was doing cardio i was on the treadmill um but i was in the gym and i was listening to the sermon and i can't remember what the sermon was mm -hmm. but instantly i just knew that i was to go and set up made for more brilliant i knew i knew the name of the organization mm -hmm. i knew what it would look like because i'd mapped it out in my head mm -hmm. you know over two years without even realizing it probably yeah so i kind of had this picture of it but in that moment i knew that i wasn't to apply for jobs mm -hmm. i was to go and set it up um so i got in the car um on the way to newcastle phoned my wife mm -hmm. told her the idea she said right okay and um, who's gonna pay for it <laughs> i was like god god's gonna provide i think yeah, yeah she's like right okay when do you want to do it i was like like in a few months you know the end of you know i think it was maybe end of march sort of april time that we were having this chat and i was like i think end of june mm. that's me and basically you know i'm just using her as a soundboard i'm kind of yeah. want i'm expecting her to tell me this is ridiculous we yeah. have a mortgage you know we have two little girls mm. what what why are you talking this nonsense mm. but she didn't she just said okay let's do it Brilliant. And i'm thinking you are mental <laughs> right but yeah so we started asking questions probing people like mm -hmm. people who are in ministry people who are much smarter than than we are and just asking mm -hmm. could this work what does this look like yeah do you think this is crazy and their response just was like well do you think god's in it mm -hmm. because if god's in it then then it's not crazy Brilliant. you know and and then yeah june so a year and a half ago what 18 months ago left left teaching mm -hmm um and set up made for more so we went on, went on a career break i don't want to harp on but i think this bit's important like mm -hmm. i went on a career break and my career break was, was for, uh, for two years i got it extended and in theory and teaching you can extend that to five years mm -hmm. and, and that was always in my head right i've got a career break two years end of two years things are going well i'll extend it mm -hmm. i'll go to five mm -hmm. why not you know what I mean? That's I suppose that's the thinking, mm -hmm. the human side. And I was chatting with a guy, probably about three months ago, and he was asking me about the career break, and I was telling him this, like, yeah, I've got another, you know, the end of the year, and then I'm going to take three more, yeah, just to get it all. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. it's just a nice wee package, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And he just asked me why. He goes, "You're not going to stay, made for more." 
at the end of the three years. And I went, no, I am. And he goes, right. And I just, he, and I just left. I was just, I left the conversation just with this weight. Mm. And I realized in that moment, I was using my career break as a safety net. Mm -hmm. It was as if I was saying, right, I'm out of the boat. I'm walking on water yeah. in faith, following God, asking him, lead me for more, lead me and my family. We trust you. Mm -hmm. But I'm literally yeah. hanging onto the boat, yeah, yeah. trailing it behind me as I follow mm -hmm. him, like a wee safety net. Good so at the, end of the, at the end of the career break, if I don't like what I see, I'll jump back okay. in mm -hmm. the teaching, mm -hmm. you know? And I got home again, I chatted with my wife, we prayed about it. And right there and then, it was like nine o'clock at night, wrote the email to the principal, mm -hmm. CC'd in the VP, so there was no taking it back, <laughs> and, uh, and just said, like, I don't need the career break, thank mm -hmm. you, appreciate everything you've done for me, yeah. but I'm not coming back, Brilliant. because God has a plan for me, and made for more, so, so yeah, and then made for more has been, has been going since then, really. Amazing. Um, like, for people that are listening, that's, that's an amazing story. Yeah, so class, so I've heard that before, but so so refreshing. Where are you guys at now? You are in over fifty schools. You are out like three or four times, four or five times a week, maybe like a couple times a day. Yeah, it's been amazing. Like you start off and you are like, like what do you even do? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like what 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 do you do now? Yeah. Um, you know, you've got a name of an organization, you got an Instagram, mm -hmm. and then you kind of feel like now what and. Mm -hmm. I got good advice about setting up a, a board of directors, mm -hmm. people who are much smarter than you that can do things you can't do. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So made it more, we have, a, we have a board of directors that are in charge. I'm not interested in building my own wee kingdom. Mm -hmm. So they employ me now. They're mm -hmm. my bosses. I have no control over made for more. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I want it because oh. it's God's, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we set that up. We, we then just started letting people know that, listen, we're here. Mm -hmm. We love to teach the Bible on identity. We love to talk about culture and how it shapes us. And we also want to go into schools and talk about the big issues that are impacting our young people yeah. and, and stealing their identity. So, so mental health, self-esteem, drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So we sort of create Made For More and what it does and just started to let people know about it. Mm -hmm. And it's been crazy. Like we just have been flat out over mm -hmm. the last 18 months you know we're having to say no to things all the time we last year was me and a few part-time interns mm -hmm. i worked at a desk in the church beside you mm -hmm. you had a big desk <laughs> with a window yeah i was under the stairs with yeah. a wee tiny desk harry potter. and yeah i was <laughs> harry potter basically um and mm -hmm. and now like you know a year later we're we're in this office you mm -hmm. know We've got three full-time interns. We've got you and Kirby, you know, doing part-time mm -hmm. stuff. Ryan's now employed full-time. We, yeah, this year alone, like since September, we've spoke to nearly 11,000 people. Um, we're probably doing 40 to 45 workshops or talks every month. Mm -hmm. We've been in, in Arkansas, we've been in Dallas, we've been in Portugal, we've mm -hmm. gone to Canada yeah. in a week. It's just crazy. It's like, amazing, yeah. But mm -hmm. you know what, like, it's nothing to do with me. Yeah, and I re really do mean that. Like, God opens the doors. Mm. God provides all these different opportunities, um, and literally every week He is blowing us away with a new story, a Brilliant. new opportunity, um, and financially, like we don't have a lot of money, but we have enough mm -hmm. as an organization that yeah. we can continue to grow and continue to trust Him, and and that's what God does. Like He just He provides what you need. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the manna from heaven. You know here's enough for you every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to get, don't take more, don't mm -hmm. get greedy. Mm -hmm. Enough every day and then we, we wake up and we go again. And mm -hmm. it's been amazing to see and it's, it's, it's changed who I am in terms of my mm -hmm. faith because I wasn't like that before. Yeah. I love a, I love a budget, a savings yeah, account. Yeah. Do you know uh, what I mean? And now to just have to really pray and trust God for, for every penny that comes into my account, never mind made for more, um, has, has really been a privilege. Mm. That's so encouraging. Um, well, kind of heading towards the end, two, two more questions, one really quick one. How can we, how can people listening find out more about Made For More and how could we be praying for you as an organization? Yeah, so um, we, a third of what we do is, is on social media. Mm -hmm. um, like we do skills work, we do church stuff, and then we do social media and mm -hmm. we do it really intentionally. Mm -hmm. It's where young people are at. It's where the students are at, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We spend most of our time there. It's not great for us, mm -hmm. let's be honest. 
a lot of what we're looking at out there on our on our feeds is actually leaves us feeling quite negative mm -hmm. and quite insecure so our heart is to redeem instagram we want to put yeah. out just jesus focused content gospel content that we can drip feed into people's lives every day and mm -hmm. so we share videos we share posts of what we're up to and um, so if you're on social media you, you can check that out you can give us a follow yeah. it's made for more ni and we've got a website which kind of is, is similar you mm -hmm. know just shares a bit more about who we are awesome. um, so that's where you can find us mm -hmm. um, in terms of what you can pray for just pray that god continues to use us yeah like you know we're try still trying to navigate things we're still trying mm -hmm. to find our feet you know, if you go into the majority of churches and schools across this country and ask them about Made For More, mm -hmm. they have no idea who we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. And that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. That's more people to reach. But mm -hmm. we are just scratching the surface mm -hmm. here. So um, pray that God keeps opening doors, mm -hmm. that he keeps giving us opportunities, that we continue to, to listen to him and, yeah. and take the right opportunities. Um, pray for God's financial provision, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we continue to get more people willing to give monthly, mm -hmm. that we get people willing to give, you know, big chunks of money, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, because we want to employ two more people before mm -hmm. September That's so we can double what we do again. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and just, just pray for God's protection because ultimately if we're glorifying God, the enemy's going to hate that. So yeah. he's going to try and stop us. So yeah. let's just pray against that as well. Nice one. Cool. We're here. We're so pumped for the 29th of January. Last question. What can we expect that night? You and your team are coming along. We're so excited. So like 20, 29th of January at half past eight at Central Church. But what can we expect that night from you guys? Um, yeah, we're bringing merch. So nice. bring your money. Mm. Uh, it's not free. Can you pay a card? Calvin still owes me money. Oh. He just keeps lifting. Look at him. Look at him. Remember? Do we, oh, I. Do we want fleece, that's right. You can pay contactless, <laughs> card, cash, no yeah. euros. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, so we're gonna bring the merch down and stuff, which mm -hmm. is just another opportunity to, um, for people to kind of, yeah, you're a walking conversation cool. is the way we like to describe it. Yeah. Um, it's also the money goes back into what we do. Um, we're gonna be interviewing Ryan, mm -hmm. so he's gonna be giving his testimony. Um, so we're gonna really get into that, which is an amazing testimony mm -hmm. of how God transformed his life, but yet he still he still struggles with the shame and labels of his past. And that's very real for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to be, yeah, just opening God's word and teaching. So awesome. we're going to be looking at um, the identity of God, a bit mm -hmm. of Moses and the burning bush. Nice. Um, for me, the more we understand about who God is, it just helps us understand more about who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, yeah, the point of the night is to look at that, that we are not our labels. Mm -hmm. We are not the things that we struggle with, but we are in fact... Um, part of God's family, Israel priesthood, loved, um, and that's what we need to hold on to. Nice. Um, so yes, yeah, so it should be a good night. Looking yeah. forward to it. Nice one. We're here. Jimmy, thank you so much for your time. Today, just another reminder, 29th, this podcast hopefully go up tonight, so it's Monday, two nights time, Wednesday. Wednesday, 29th of January, half past eight. We'd love to see you there. Jimmy, thanks again for your time today, mate. Thank you, mate. Nice one. Cheers. Fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> thanks again for listening today. And for more information, please check out our Facebook and Instagram. See you soon.